Heyo and welcome to Acrylicodes channel where we teach you how to create generative visuals with Touch Designer. If you're interested in mastering your Touch Designer skills, then subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to stay notified whenever we bring out new tutorials. If you find this video helpful, please like it and share it with your friends. If you're new to the channel, make sure to check out our other tutorials. And if you're new with Touch Designer, make sure to check our absolute beginner tutorial and this will teach you the basics of Touch Designer. Now let's move on to the actual tutorial. Keep on watching to see the result. First we're going to create a static image, then we'll animate it and this will be another version and for the last version we will add some effects in post-processing. So let's start. Here I have a brand new Touch Designer project and as always I have split the screen and then selected the backdrop tops. I'm going to press tab, add an out top and turn the render flag on. The first part of the image we're going to recreate is the grid floor. Let's go ahead and create a grid sop. Later on I'm going to add a transform and a noise, so it makes sense for me right now to add a null sop here. Right click on the output of the null and here we're going to add a geometry. Copy the geometry and paste it underneath. The reason here for two geometries is one of them is going to serve as a mask to hide everything underneath the grid and the other one is going to be the actual grid. If we were here to omit the second geometry, then the other shapes we're going to add later are going to be visible underneath the grid, as illustrated here, since the space between the lines has transparency. Okay, now back to our network. Right click on the out of the first geo and create a render top. Copy paste the render top right underneath and this will also automatically connect to both geometries. To finish our render network, let's right click to add our camera comp, which will also take care of the error warning on our render tops. Now to get the grid look on our floor, we will press tab and add a line material. Drag the line material, drop it on top of the geo and select parameter material. This will give us the grid look. Let's click next on the render tool and in the parameter window we'll type in the geometry as our geo2. This will be our black mask as explained before. Let's go ahead and rename that to mask to avoid confusion later on. Let's right click on the out of the render top up here and we'll add a composite top. Both the render top and the mask will be connected to the composite. In the parameter window of the comp we set the operation to add and finally we connect our comp to the out. So there we have the grid floor. Before we move on with the grid, let's connect the transform right before the out and in the parameter window we set the alpha background color to 1 and turn on comp over background color. This will give us the black background all over. Now that that's settled, we'll go ahead and transform our grid into a floor. To do this, we'll add a transform sop between our grid and our null. On the parameter window of the grid, we'll set the orientation to be in the zx plane. Next, we'll go to the parameter window of the transform and in here we'll rotate the plane in the x direction. Before we apply the next transformations, let's click on the camera node and in the parameter window go to view and we'll set the value of the field of view angle to 120. Go back to the transform and here we'll set the uniform scale to 10 which will allow us to enlarge our geometry along all three axes simultaneously. Go to the grid and here we'll set the scale of x to minus 2 in order to have the size of our squares look more organic. Now we'll probably tweak these values later on again when we put together all the shapes but for now let's go to the transform and set the translate y value to minus 2.1 and the rotate x value to minus 14.9. By the way all these transformations will be applied to the grid and the mask underneath it simultaneously. Now for our second shape, this mountain looking grid right here. We're going to select all nodes from the grid to the geometries and copy paste them down below. Let's copy paste also the render and the mask and then we're going to drag the geo3 onto the render2 and select parameter geometry. Drag geo4 onto the mask1 and again select parameter geometry. Now since the geometry is still connected to the line material, we already have the grid look and this new shape is in the exact same position of the first grid. Now since we want this grid to not be a flat grid but instead have that mountain look, let's go to the beginning of the network and in between the grid and the transform we're going to add a noise sop. We said we're going to create a static image first, so for this let's go to the parameter window of the noise sop and we see here in the transform that the grid is being animated in the TZ plane. Let's go ahead and delete the expression to have a static image. For the next part, I'm going to tweak the values of the transform, the noise and the grid, so that our shape sits perfectly on top of our floor grid. I'm gonna speed up this part, but ultimately the values are these. On the transform we have the uniform scale to 
57, the translate y to minus 3.7, and the translate z to minus 4.6. Then, on the parameter window of the grid, we have a size of minus 4.6, and the number of rows and columns are both set to 100. Lastly, on the parameter window of the noise, we'll set the period to 0.43, the seed to 2.1, an exponent of 1.45, and the amplitude is 0.62. Now let's click on the line material node. In the parameter window, go to line, and in here, we'll select the value of the line far color to be 1, so our lines are defined. The line far color parameter specifies the color value for the line at the distance far plane and beyond, whereas the line near color parameter specifies the color value for the line at the distance near plane. So let's go ahead and also set that to white. Now on to our next shape, the triangle. For this, press tab and we'll add a circle top. To make it into a triangle, go to the parameter window, toggle on the polygon, and the number of sides is already set to 3 by default. To have the top of the triangle facing upwards, go ahead and rotate the circle to 90 degrees. From here, let's connect the circle to the comp, and since the quality here is not looking so nice, go to the common tab of the parameter window of the circle and set the resolution to be 1280 by 720. Let's go back to the comp, and in here we'll set the operation to over, and have our mask be over the circle top. To have the whole triangle in the picture, we're going to decrease the radius here to about 0.175. So we already have the triangle here. What's missing is the effect of our triangle made out of black and white lines. To achieve this, let's press tab and we're going to add a ramp top first. In here, we'll set the type to vertical and the period to 0.1. To make the lines not so uniform, we're going to connect the ramp to a lens distort top to apply some visual effects. And in the parameter window, we'll change the values of the radial distortion constants like so. For the next step, we'll add a comp top here and connect the circle top to it. Before we connect the distortion to the comp, we notice that the ramp has some grey gradient. In order to make it plain black and white, let's add a limit here. In the parameter window, we'll set the quantize value to round and set the value step to 1. The limit top can limit the pixel values of the input image to fall between a minimum and a maximum value, and quantizing the pixel values will snap each channel to the closest allowable value. What this basically means is that for every pixel in the ramp that is grey but closer to black, it will transform it into black, and every pixel that is grey but closer to white, it will transform it into white. Great, now let's connect the limit also to the comp, go back to the ramp and we'll set the resolution also to 1280 by 720. Lastly, we connect our comp to the comp 1 and if we notice that the top of our triangle is getting cut off, we only need to go back to the ramp and play around with the face to change this. Great, so now we're done with our static image. For the animated version, we'll start by adding the particles in the background here. For this, press tab and add a sphere sop first. Right click on the out to connect a noise sop and again, right click on the out of the noise to connect a sort sop. Let's right click on the out and add a particle sop. This will help us control the motion of particles for our particle system simulation later. Right click on the out and we will add a geometry comp for the render. Let's press tab to add a constant material and then drag and drop it onto the geo and select parameter material. Now we see our particles moving in a sphere shape. To have them move in a random way, we go to the sort sop and set the point sort to random. Now the sphere is in the same position of the triangle and that's why all the particles are only concentrating right here where the triangle is. To have them move all over, we'll go to the sphere and increase its radius. To have more particles born each second, we'll go to the particle sop and increase the birth value. Now in here we notice that we're able to notice the particles underneath our grid floor, and we don't want this to happen. So to get rid of this, I'm going to the parameter window of the render and write down all the geometries I want to render except for the geo5. So after I do this, the particles are not going to be rendered at all. 
and then I use another render later to avoid the problem we're having. And while I was here, I also realized that the render and the mask here were redundant, so I'm going to delete both nodes. This wouldn't have been a problem on this instance if I would have left them because there are no performance issues in our network, but it's better to have this work ethic to avoid mistakes in the future. Okay, now let's add a second render down here and drag and drop Geo5 to the render and select parameter geometry. Now let's press tab and we're going to add a comp here and connect both our mask from above and our second render to it. Here we'll set the operation to over and since our mask is over the render, if we connect the comp to our comp1, the particles will be visible everywhere except for our area where the mask is. Great, now let's move on. Let's go to the palette and add a feedback here. Connect the comp3 to the feedback and the feedback to the comp1. We can tweak the opacity values here and we'll get this nice firework effect on the particles. So we have the moving stars. Now to have our mountains also moving, we'll go to the noise shop, transform tab, and in the translate C parameter, we'll type in abs time dot seconds time 0.1. If this causes the mountains to get lost underneath the grid, we can always go to the transform shop and translate the mountains in the Y direction to make them go higher. To have the lines of the triangle moving, We'll go to the ramp and animate the face by typing in also appstime.seconds times minus 0.05. This has the lines moving from top to bottom, which constantly leave this triangle without the top part. This looks too weird to me, so to fix it I'll add another transform after the circle. I'll add another composite also. Connect the transform to the comp, set the operation to over and have the transform be over the comp too. This will give us a brand new triangle and if I scale it down and move it up to the top, this will fix the problem I had. And there we go, here we have our animation. If you're satisfied, you can stop here, turn on some side trance music and watch these visuals until you get tired or you could add some extra effects. Between the comp1 and the transform, we can right click to add a base comp. Let's rename it to glow and we can scroll in to go inside the base. In here we have just our in and out tops. Let's make some space in between, right click on the line and we'll add an old top. We'll copy it and paste it twice underneath. We'll set the pre-shrink parameter on the first blur to 16, on the second one to 8 and on the third one to four. This will make it look more organic and create the illusion that the objects further away from the camera are blurrier than the one closer to it. Let's add a composite top, select all blurs and simultaneously connect them to the comp. Here we'll set the operation to screen. Between the in and the out tops we'll add another comp and we'll connect the first comp to its second input. Let's set the operation to average and there we have our glow. Now let's scroll out to the original network and let's make some more space here after our glow. Press tab to connect a noise and click on the out of the noise to add a level. On the parameter window we'll set the type of noise to random and if we go to the common tab we can set here the resolution to 1280 by 720. On the connecting line between the glow comp and the transform we'll add a composite. We'll connect the level to its second input and set the operation to add. We'll lower the brightness and this will give us the cool grainy effect. And this was it, we are done with all three versions of our visuals, first the static image and then the normal animated version and then the post-processing version. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have any questions or recommendations for future tutorials, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, check out our Instagram and if you'd like to support us into making more free videos like this, consider donating to our PayPal account and I will see you on the next tutorial. Until then, have a great time, bye!